What's up, fam? Extraordinary Life with Elijah. And this week, Brian, Aaron, and Ruby are my extra, and I am the ordinary. Friends, I'm so thankful to have been able to grow up and have you in my lives, that all three of you have been such examples of kind gentleness, of love and authenticity that has marked me for life. We haven't got to see each other for years now, but I wanna tell you, I wanna encourage you in the Lord that God is working, he has worked, he is worked, and he has works greater still to do through you to the glory of his great name. Friends, this is a bit of a complicated one. I had a beautiful opportunity to sit down with two of my friends, Caitlin and Ashlyn, this last week and record a podcast together talking about parenting and what that looks like, our roles, responsibilities are in the Lord. As we pressed into that conversation, we got into this thing that's so common amongst parents and communities where new parents come on board, older parents they have this penchant for telling young parents, enjoy your children while they're young because once they get older, they're just gonna be living terrors and it's gonna be horrible. So just love those infant snuggles while you have them. Or on the flip side, if life is super hard, your kids are maybe colicky and they cry a lot or they're very difficult and they're young, but lots of parents say, don't worry about it. I know they just, it stinks right now, but once they get older, then they're gonna be very enjoyable. As we pressed into that, we all agreed that what God has done in our hearts is that Jesus, by his grace, that he enjoys us because of who he is, not because of our maturity, because of his goodness, because of his love, and because of his grace that covers over a multitude of sins, God enjoys us because he is good and he is our father. Therefore, we don't evolve into pleasantness for him. It's a matter of his sovereign working of grace that makes us the righteousness of Christ. And therefore, he enjoys us even while we're growing through our immaturity. As I came out of that recording with my friends, I was thinking through in my life, where had I experienced that as a kid growing up? Had I experienced the negative context of it? Had I experienced the hopeful context of it? And as I sat in my car, it was there that I remembered my friend, Brian. Back towards the early part of the 90s, me and my family lived in a very small town called Valier, up by the Highline, close to Canada, halfway between Shelby and Conrad. During that time, we attended a church fellowship that Aaron and his wife, Ruby, oversaw in Shelby. Their son, Brian, was my senior, I believe, by at least eight to 10 years. And Ruby, Brian, and Pastor Aaron were such a wonderful example of a family that truly loved and honored one another. Aaron's life and Ruby, they were both marked by such a gentle, authentic kindness. It just exuded in their life. And it was such an example and a testimony to me and my family as I grew up as a kid. One of the beautiful elements was that out of their generosity and kindness to my family, that as we merged out of Shelby, we we're trying to find a house in the community that we were moving to. And as my dad tried to pave the way to get everything as smooth as possible for us, the rest of the family stayed with Ruby and Aaron for a time as that transition happened. As a result of that, we got extra time to live in community with Ruby, Aaron, and Brian and to see their family living together in a day-by-day -day testimony. I remember one time, Brian was sitting at the piano playing. And I, from the, a young age, at age of three, had always wanted to play piano. And I saw a lot of women play piano, but not many men. And so as I watched Brian play the piano, I didn't play piano then. It was so mystifying to me. It was so incredible to see one a man playing the piano and so well. Brian also, I remember, had such a low voice. He had just this low, booming voice. And so as he was playing, it was just this 
expression of manhood and an example of what I was soon to grow into. As I watched him in my little heart, I marveled at this example of manhood that I longed to be. And out of the innocence of my youth and maturity, I just asked him in awe, Brian, how old are you? <laughs> he was playing along. He looked at me and said in his low bass voice, I'm 17. <laughs> that revelation hit me like a ton of bricks. I, at that time, I think I was a, maybe around like 10, 11 years old, and there were all of these people in my life that I heard talking with my parents. Yeah, enjoy your sons while they're still young, but once they hit their teen years, they're just gonna be rebellious, they're gonna be the worst, and it's gonna make your eyes bleed. Now, as I heard those kind of conversations happening in my young heart, I remember there was so much sadness and so much hopelessness that I was like, I, I don't want to be rebellious. I don't want to cause my parents difficulty and trouble, but these are people that I know and love and respect, and if they're saying that, I, Apparently, I'm just gonna lose my mind as a teenager and I don't have any choice, but I sure don't want to. Oh, I wanna be honoring to my parents. Now, that's where the revelation then from Brian became so powerful that I saw how he respected his father, Aaron. I saw how he respected and loved his mother, Ruby. And I saw how Ruby was so affectionate that she cared so deeply for Brian, was so proud of him as her son, Aaron likewise. And so my assumption was Brian must be far off into his mid-20s and has progressed through his horrible teen years. So therefore, when I am just awe and wonder and longing to have my life exude the example that I was seeing in Brian when he said, I'm 17, teen, 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 teen. Then it was my fish eye moment of teen, that means Brian is a teenager, and I see how Brian lives, and he's bucking the odds. It's possible to not be a rebellious little jerk as a teenager. Now that's why, Brian, you are my extra. That as you sat there at the piano, I don't even know if you remember that engagement with me, that you were just living out of the ordinary, everyday experiences of your life, that, and out of the grace that God had given you, you were honoring your mother and father, that you were pressing through whatever it was that you may have been dealing with that was difficult or struggles, but that the manifest testimony of Jesus' grace in your life was captivating a young boy's heart. And that in a moment of him asking, how old are you? And you said, I'm 17, that you transformed my heart and mind and gave me hope merging forward into my teen years. A family, I think it's so beautiful that on the day that I merged out of my conversation with Katie and Ashlyn, that it was August 24th, and that I jumped on Facebook that as God was bringing all these things back to my remembrance, that I, like the men that Jesus healed, and the one man came back to say thank you to Jesus for the massive healing that had happened in his life, that I wanted to give that gift to Brian. I jumped on my Facebook on August 24th, found out that his birthday was the next day on August 25th. <laughs> Not only was it his birthday on August 25th, that it was Brian's 50th birthday, and that his father's birthday, the previous day on August 24th, that Aaron then was turning 74. And how beautiful, like God, to have me merge into a context where I would remember the impact that two men had in my life to bring thankfulness and to be joyful over them in the Lord and the impact that they had on my life on August 24th and August 25th, the celebration of their births into the earth. Friends, my encouragement to you out of this extraordinary experience
experience, this extraordinary experience of God's grace being displayed in everyday, ordinary circumstances, is that you never know what the overflow of your life, what the overflow of you running a race with perseverance that's marked out for you, not growing weary and doing good works, that that kind of life may have on the people surrounding you. It may be just the overflow, the chugging along of your ordinary life. <laughs> Brian, I have no idea what you were up to at that point in life. <laughs> I don't even know what you were doing at the piano at that time, but in a young man telling a young boy his age, I'm 17, that that very ordinary experience became the extra overflow of God's grace to help a young boy to be able to know his father more. That it gave me hope, that it transformed my heart and mind, that it freed me up from lies and helped to strengthen me forward in exercising the gifts that God had given me to please his heart and the overflow of his grace in my life to encourage more of my peers to know the Father more so that they could be encouraged to walk in the good gifts that God had ordained for their lives to do. Friends, when we get to eternity and we meet Jesus face to face, he's going to have times when he said, thank you so much for telling your age to me with boldness, with kindness, and with the confidence of my person. Thank you for playing the piano for me. Thank you for inviting me into your house. Thank you for choosing to play Nintendo Duck Hunt with me. Thank you for serving me in such ways that we'll say, Lord, when did we ever tell you our age or play piano for you or play NES classic Duck Hunt with you? And he will say, I tell you, as often you have done these things to the least of these you have done it to me. If you subscribe to what I am doing, mm, then hit the button, hit it, and then get it. Hit the bell as well so you get notified with the new content. And if you love this video, you didn't just like it, then hit the thumbs down button. I pray blessings on your day. I love you guys lots, and I will see you in the next video.